When Elemental Beta version 3.21 came out, I did a quick video just to showcase the new taxonomy feature that you could add into your loop grid to basically show off your product or your post categories. But I wasn't at my desk and I think a visual video is so much needed. So the first thing is how do you get the beta version? You've got to go over to WordPress, Elemental, go to version control, obviously tools version control, and make sure beta tester is set to enable. You can disable this as well. And when you've done that and you go over to your plugins and you click update, you will have an update appear for Elemental Free and Elemental Pro, which now allows you to use the beta version. I strongly recommend you only do this on a testing or a staging site, never a production live site. If you ever want to roll back because you no longer want to use the beta version, then you can just roll back to a previous released version. So that's totally OK. So let's say you've now got the beta version. What you then want to do is make sure that you've gone and assigned some categories. Now, for this example that we're doing, I'm going to focus on product categories, but you could do this for post categories as well. You can use the taxonomy or the categories that you set for custom fields, uh, custom post types as well. So it's going to be really versatile what you can do here. So as an example, I actually have two categories for cat A and cat B. And you can see here that cat A has two products and cat B has one product. When I go to products, you can see product one and three are cat A and product two is cat B. So ideally, we're going to have a loop grid that's going to show the categories. And you'll also notice that each of these categories has an image as well. So this is where you go and set it. To do the same for your custom post types or your standard WordPress posts or whatever you want. It's a good idea to have the image because we're going to pull that back. And the idea is, is that is when you click on the category, it will then go to a shop page for that category because the original kind of standard way we have it is really appallingly rubbish and no one likes it. And rather than you spending loads of time doing loads of custom fields, this just makes it so much slick and easy to do. So we're now going to go over to a page and I'm now going to drop in a loop grid. And the first thing I want to show you is that normally over here in the top for the template type, we would see post and products. And that's what we kind of pick, right? You're going to have a product a loop grid, you pick products, you're going to have posts, you pick posts. But we now have post taxonomy and product taxonomy. Now, before we go and create the template or edit an existing template, we're going to go down to where it says query and make sure that the source is set to product categories. You could do product tags as well. You could also use a custom taxonomy like product appointment type, which I'm not using here. But I'm going to ensure it's set to product categories. Then I'm going to click create a template and I'm going to keep this really simple. I'm just going to go and drop in a image. I'm going to drop in a heading and I'm going to drop in a button as well. Remember, this is loop grid. You could build it how you want. You're inside of a container. You want to add in multiple containers. It's entirely up to you. Now, here's the thing you really should pay attention to. When I click on the image, you normally might have hit a dynamic tag and gone to featured image. It's what we do for post and products. You know, it's the standard way to do it. It brings back the featured image. And you might think, well, obviously this is going to be categories. So let's go for the featured image and it brings over the category image. It won't do that. What it will actually do is bring over an image for a product or a post that sits in that category which is not what you want. I want to bring back the category images over here. So here's what you do. Scroll down until you get to category image. So it is there. It tells you it's the category image, but it's easy to skip that and go and click featured. Go and click category image. Now, don't worry if it doesn't bring anything back. OK, just make sure you've selected that. Now let's go over to the title. I don't want to have add your heading text here. I'm going to click the dynamic tag. And again, you might have gone for the post title. Instead, what you want to go for is the archive title. You're going to have to get your head around this a little bit because anything to do with your taxonomy or your categories, we are now using the archive field. OK, so the same with the posts. All right. But this time we're using products. Now, what about a link? Because I definitely want you to have a link on the heading and the button. So I'm going to click the dynamic tag for the link. We normally would have gone for the post URL. Post would go to the post URL. The product one would go to the product URL. Even though it's called post URL, it still goes to the product. But you want to ignore that. Remember, archive, you want to go for the archive URL. So go and click that. Because if you click put post URL, it will go to a post that's part of the category. That's not what I want. I want it to kind of go through to the category archive, all right? 
So make sure you pick the post URL. Click the dynamic tag, ignore the post URL and go for the archive URL. You're going to get used to this, okay, the more you do it. That's basically it. I'm just going to hit save and back. Remember, this is loop grid. You can go and drop and add in whatever you want. So straight away, it's brought over my two category images and they are the category images. I can assure you of that. We've got the title, cat B, cat A. Obviously, you can sort out the ordering and we have our button. You got an empty one over here. Well, that's because it's gone and brought back the uncategorized. But don't worry, because when you're actually viewing this on the live, that won't be visible. Let me just show you a bit of cleaning up you need to do, though, before we go and view it on the live. Let's go and click on the loop grid. We're not in the template. We're on the loop grid. We don't need to change anything on the layout unless you want to mess around with the columns and the number of items, masonry equal height. But we're going to go to query. I have no posts going to uncategorize. So I'm going to say hide empty. That is now gone. OK, that's how simple and easy it was. We can also filter by depth as well. So if you've got parent uh, categories and you've got child categories, you can actually show that as well. And you can define how, what level it goes to. For simplicity, like most of you, I'm just going to go with the parent category there. So when I now view my page on a live website, you can actually see cat A and cat B. Now, I have two products going to cat A and one product going to cat B. So when I go here and I hover over, you can see that we've got the finger icon. Let's go and click cat B. I can see three products. There should only be product number two. That doesn't seem right, does it? Let's go to cat A. Again, I can see three. I should only see product one and product three. Why is that? Why is it not following it through? This is really an easy and simple to sort out. What you want to do is go over to your product archive template. So go to templates, make sure you're going to your product archive and go and edit it. Now, you may have a shop page whereby you have got it set to be latest products as the query. So, you know, when you add in your loop grid for your shop one, this time it's going products. You go to query, you're probably going to show your latest products because why wouldn't you want to do that? So you may have a page dedicated to the shop or you may have a, a copy of this on your home page or somewhere else. That's OK. But the version that is going to be saved as your products archive, this is important. OK, your products archive must not be set to latest products. It must be set as current query. So now when I click cat B, I get one product. I'll go back again and I click cat A. I get two products. And let's just say I was on a different shop page now somewhere in the website and I go and click cat B. Look at that, it will now go to that product archive and just show me cat B. So maybe you've got like loads and loads of products, right? Say you've got a thousand and you're showing the category and it says hats. As soon as I go, oh, I wonder what, oh, I want to just filter to hats, but I don't want to have a filter at the top or down the side. This can now filter it for you. This is really quick and easy to do. Like this makes things so much more efficient and easier to do for posts and products. The only things you got to bear in mind, like I said, was make sure you're using the category image, the archive title and the archive URL and the same archive URL for your buttons. Or even if you're going to put any other glicky, clicky, glitchy, thingy midges all over your container. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron, beta version Elementor 3.21. You can go and test this out. Can't wait to be, for this to be finally released. This has been asked for for a long, long time. I know you're going to love it because I love it already. Take care. See you soon. Bye.